Do you need to find the skeleton? How would you tell people that this happens? You personally, how would you tell this happens? Well, that's a question. I don't know. I don't know. I'm research on this. Hey there YouTube, the Dapper Dinosaur here, back for the second part of this two-part series. Once again, Matt can't get anything right, and once again, I'm here to see if I can fix that by simply addressing him directly. Also, do note that since Raw Matt has a habit of just quietly deleting embarrassing things he's written or produced, this series might serve as the only record of his ludicrous article after a while. You're welcome, Internet. No other evidence. Even the jaw and teeth have nothing to do with giraffes. Speaking of jaws, let's debunk why jaw evolution is not evidence for the Therapsids as the basal ancestor for all mammals. This is easy. Oh, it's easy? Then I'm sure the first thing you say won't be jaw-droppingly moronic. The quadriarticular jaw joint is in all species. All tetrapods possess this. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Not even all species have jaws, and most vertebrates don't have that jaw. Fish tend to use an angular quadrate joint. Mammals use a dentary squamosal jaw joint. So, no, not all species, or even all tetrapods, have a quadrate articular jaw joint. Who'd have thought that the very first thing you'd say after saying how easy it was to debunk would be, like, comparative anatomy 101 level wrong? Seriously. Just try a little bit. Remember, the job is, is all they have to say these creatures, the rapsids, gave rise to all mammals today. So if job evolution does not match, then evolution is finished. Well, no. As mentioned, we also have characteristics of teeth, as well as the ribcage that help us piece together mammal evolution. But even if we had none of that, that would mean that there would be less resolved about mammal evolution. But that's not exactly the death knell of the theory of evolution. It predicts and explains far too much data for that one hypothetically open question in paleontology to put a dent in it. Don't forget, their story only plays out in the fossil record. Nope, it also plays out in the genome and in embryology. Remember, it was embryology that first predicted that therapsids with a double jaw joint should be found. So they go by what layers rocks these creatures are found in, and they will their story from that. You're wrong. It's so wrong. Wrong, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Even in the papers you alluded to, although you never cited them, they went by morphological character states. In fact, that Olson paper had a whole page of them before it got to the discussion of Steposaurus. It's not just based on stratigraphy, but it's nice that the stratigraphy matches so well with the predictions of evolution and the actual morphology of the finds. This is why it's so easy for them to storytell, because they can just line up anything they want and make the story up from it. They do this with the Thrapsid with evolution of the jaw, which I will debunk next. Weren't you already debunking it? Let's look at probating Dathus. You see, a jaw joint was never found in any Thrapsids until they discovered probating Dathus. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the f*** did you just say? I honestly can't with this one. Let's take a look at some animals that are therapsids and were found with jaws before Probanagnathus was discovered in 1970. We have Estaminosuchus, discovered in 1968. We've got Endotheodon, all the way back in 1876, a therapsid with a jaw discovered nearly a century before Probanagnathus. Placerius was known from 1930. Diectodon was first described by Richard Owen in 1876, the guy who famously invented the term dinosaur. Also from the same year, and from Owen, we have Gorgonops. We have Thronaxodon from 1894. We have Diademodon from 1894. We have Seroxonus from 1955. We have Elurosaurus from 1934. We have Chiniquidon from 1936. And honestly, I could just keep going, but I think with 10 examples, you get the idea. Which has a second pair of bones involved in the jaw articulation. Okay, so now I'm thinking that you meant no previously discovered Thrapsid had a jaw with both an articular quadrate and a dentary squamosal jaw joint? If that's what you meant, you should have said that. But because you're bad at grammar, what you actually said was that no jaw had ever been found before for any thrapsid until Probanagnathus, and it just happened to have that double jaw articulation. Seriously, man, take an English class. Learn to write clearly. Although, come to think of it, you might still mean the stupider thing I thought you meant. It is what you literally said, and you already said that all species have a quadrate articular jaw joint, and that's not any sillier. 
The school muscle bone was positioned alongside the quadrate in the upper jaw, and the dentary was positioned alongside the articular in the lower jaw. Even its name, probatognathus, means progressive jaw. You managed to get something right. Good job. This is the type of jaw that we humans have today, including birds, fish, bats, kangaroos, opossums, all kinds of things. And then you have to screw it all up. Mammals, birds, and fish all have different jaw structures, and none of them have the same jaw joint as probanignathus. In fact, nothing alive has that kind of jaw joint, where the joint is between both the dentary and squamosal and the articular and quadrate. So to say this creature was the ancestor and gave rise to all these different families shows you how absurd their logic is. Nothing you listed was a family, and no one is saying that probanignathus has anything to do with the evolution of fish or birds. And further, it's simply not imagination that probanignathus has the intermediary double jaw joint predicted based on embryology. In fact, if you or anyone else watching wants a deep, deep dive into both the evolution of mammals and the absolute failure of creationists to address it for decades, please take a look at R.J. Downard's book, Evolution Slam Dunk. A link to it on Amazon is in the description, as is a link to his channel. This creature was found in the late Triassic layer in South America. So because of this alone, it must have evolved this feature later, because nothing before in the fossil record had it. That's the logic they use. I mean, it's the first time that the features show up that we know of, and there were more basal jaws before and more derived jaws after. Was it the very first? No, probably not. But its anatomy is what we would expect of such an organism. And by the way, this is exactly what a transitional species looked like. This was literally a missing link until 1970. And then we found it. So what do we have? We have a jaw that works differently in different kinds of animals, and they have no idea if creatures with jaws that are quadrate articular produce better hearing or worse than those that do not. It's not so much who's better at hearing, although mammals are some of the best at it in the world, so we do know, but it's really about what do those bones that are already used for hearing do once they are no longer needed to form the jaw joint? Well, the most obvious thing is to specialize for the remaining function, namely, hearing. Since this jaw morphology is the only evidence they have to build their entire phylogenetic tree for these species, then we can safely say they are speculating at best. Not to belabor the point, but it's far from the only thing that these phylogenies are based on. I've already talked about the division of the dorsal vertebrae into thoracic and lumbar. You yourself even mentioned the stance of the creature and degree of heterodonty in the dentition. For those of you who didn't go to vertebrate anatomy school, that's the degree to which different teeth have different sizes and shapes. Heterodont is what mammals are, with distinct tooth shapes like incisors and molars, whereas, say, reptiles tend to be homodont where all the teeth are about the same shape and tend to be of similar size to their neighbors. That being said, there is some degree of heterodonty in dinosaurs, such as heterodontosaurids, but also even in Tyrannosaurus rex. You know who else has heterodont teeth? My patrons and channel members. I want to take a moment during this first month of a brand new year to thank my patrons and my channel members, especially those pledging $20 or above, Ben Tovind, Ian Chen, Sphincter of Doom, and Henry Hutanen. You guys really helped me get through the last year, and it was a rough one, and I cannot thank you enough. Now, if anyone here is listening and isn't supporting but would like to, there's a link to my Patreon down in the description, as well as the option to join the channel underneath this video. If those aren't right for you, there's also a Teespring store, and if none of that works for you, please just like and share this video, because that helps this channel grow, and that really helps out. It is all based on homology entirely off what rock layers they find them in, nothing more. Dude, commas exist. Please use them. I'm begging you. But also, it's all based off homology and rock layers. Well, yeah, that's how paleontology works. What else would it be based on? It's like complaining that plastics engineering is all based on physics and chemistry. Their entire story is built of hypothetical subjective interpretations. Nothing has been proven, nor can ever be proven. Science is not in the business of proving things. However, this is a confirmed prediction that we would have no reason to expect, except if evolution were true and mammals descended from more basal amniotes that shared the basal traits that are retained by reptiles. Probatognathus had no molars, yet thoracids did. All I have to say is that your own picture that you put in this little article is a probatognathus jaw with molars. Do you just not know what a molar is? Those are like classic insectivore molars. In fact, if you look at a modern shrew, you'll see similar molars for a similar diet. Am I just taking crazy pills here? This is so obvious, and it's in your own article, Matt. Probatognathus lived alongside thoracids, so evidence it evolved from thoracids is speculative at best. This is just, if humans evolved from monkeys, then why are there still monkeys? It's the same as saying, well, if I'm descended from my grandmother, then why do I still have cousins? This is a prat. 
A point refuted a thousand times. I'm not wasting any more effort on it. Supposedly, probatic mantis predates the origin of mammals by nearly 100 million years, yet has many characteristics of mammals alive even today. Which makes it a good transitional form. Clearly, it is nothing but an ancestral mosaic that evolutionists pretend is primitive and a transitional. But an ancestral mosaic is exactly what a transitional is. You basically just said that's just bound pages between two covers that people pretend is a book. Its jaw only exhibits fully formed and fully functional two separate jaw bones with fully functional inner ears with zero transitions. Nope, it has four fully functional jaw bones and two functional jaw joints, with the posterior joint also being used for hearing in the same manner as more basal therapsids, as well as reptiles. That's precisely what a good transition from the basal tetrapod condition to the mammal condition should look like. It appears in probatic gathis fully formed and functional and does not appear in any therapsid before it. Yeah. Transitional forms are or were real animals. Of course they're fully formed. It's not like they're going to be embryos squirming around trying not to die for a few hundred thousand years. Even the evolutionists admit unusual paired conditions did not last long, though. Right, on a geological timescale. There's not much reason to keep a redundant jaw joint around, but there is good reason to specialize the jaw joint already used in hearing for better hearing. Soon the quadrate and articular lost their function in jaw articulation and even their position in the jaw, so they even admit that this evolution of the jaw was fast and they have no idea why it even occurred. Wrong. It was an adaptation to insectivory. And why would it happening fast on geological scale be some kind of admission? Evolution happens at different rates, at least when looking at gross morphology. This is SpongeBob evolutionary dogma our kids are taught as fact every single day. It's not dogma, it's the firm conclusion of decades of predictions, tests, and calculations by scores of scientists. I'm sorry you have a problem with that, but hey, that's all for me for now. I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. Thank you.